the human rights defenders that are almost most at risk now are those defending the land or the water rights, forestry rights of their communities against big business, mining, whatever. And a, a very significant number get killed every year. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a real problem. Can I start by asking you? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, to me, bravery means not that I'm not afraid. It's that I'm afraid that I'm going to keep going and having the courage to uh, go into that community and take up that issue. Uh, as you spoke earlier, you went to a conference of loggers and you had the courage, but you must have been afraid. Um, so um, that's bravery. You know, when you uh, have the courage to go through uh, that sense of feeling uh, more than unease, actually feeling a little bit afraid. Um, I think that's, that's real bravery, but um, it's not that you don't feel uh, quite nervous and afraid. Can I tell you that that was the quote of Mandela that I read mm -hmm. somewhere, it's like the bravery and courage is not the absence of fear, yeah. but your triumph um, hmm. over you it. See, he always says it better than I could <laughs> <laughs> um, Well, to me, bravery... Now tell that story of how you went to that conference. Okay. Um, okay. Yes, to me, bravery sometimes having the guts and the strength to stand your ground when you are facing what you thought is beyond your mm -hmm. ability to face. I mean, it's, it's really a complex way to, to put it together. So one time, I was invited to a conference as a keynote speaker, and at that time I was quite young, so I was really excited to be a keynote speaker in a big conference, Australia Forestry Institute, and I thought, wow, um, I'm going to be speaking about forest. This is exciting. And then I arrived there, and everyone is prologuing. And I find myself in a situation, I have to change my presentation. <laughs> this is, I cannot be talking about conservation when everyone is not supportive mm. of it. Everyone is against. Uh, conservation and I have to come out and tell everyone like look I am a conservationist I am a greenie I am here to conserve forests that you all try to love mm -hmm. and they all stand up and clap and mm -hmm. laugh mm -hmm. uh, seeing this young woman on stage <laughs> talking about what mm -hmm. they I will mm -hmm. do against what they're trying mm -hmm. to achieve but that took courage funny enough um, there's very few things that that scares me mm. in that situation. Mm. I sort of um, see my life in the perspective. I have been privileged enough to be continuing the work that so many have started. Mm. Um, I've been privileged enough to be given a voice yeah. and allowing myself to use that voice to amplify the work mm. of others. Yeah. Um, so many other people taking a lot more risks mm. than me. Mm. And um, a sad news come up mm. earlier this month. Um, a lawyer who is fighting against a large mega dam in Batam Toru ecosystem, mm -hmm. south uh, of where I was working, was killed. Mm. Um, he was found in uh, beaten down um, on the street and the police ruled out uh, the death by saying it's just a traffic accident mm -hmm. and it really breaks my heart because we face the reality that grassroots climate activists mm -hmm. um, are taking most risk. It's very true that there are so many and the human rights defenders that are almost most at risk now are those defending the land or the water rights, forestry rights of their communities against big business, mining, whatever and a, a very significant number get killed every year. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a real problem. But uh, on, when I was High Commissioner, um, one of the things that I was very happy about, if you like, was that I never minded standing up to bullies. And I was never afraid to stand up to bullies. So it wasn't so much bravery as um, I was determined to call them out and you know, face them.